Good morning, it is officially autumn. The knitwear has come back out. So I thought I would come on today and film my yarn haul from Yarnsale. I had an absolutely super time um, with the lovely Laura and Saz from Cast Yarns, um, but I am desperate to cast some new projects on. I'm going away for a few days on a bit of a crafty retreat and I need to get started on some of them, so hence I am filming my yarn haul today. Um, I'm not sure when you will be seeing this video, when you will have seen my Yarnsale video first and then this or whether this is the first thing you'll see and my Yarndale video will come later. But I need to get this haul in the can, so to speak, so that I can start using it as soon as possible. So I'm gonna start with my very first purchase of the day. I was gonna be a good girl and walk all the way around, see all the things I loved, make a note of them, and then go back at the end to buy the things that I loved. Um, as it happens, I don't think I would have had time to do that because we honestly didn't do the last row of the show until about three o'clock um, and we were out of there by half past three. So I'm glad that I gave in and bought as I went. However, I have spent a bit too much money. I didn't have a budget, I didn't need anything and therefore I may have gone overboard. <laughs> I confess. I am a yarnaholic. Um, the other thing that I have done that I never ever do is I have purchased not one, not two, not three, not four, but five lots of yarn that I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with them. They're just pretty and that is not me. So Miriam, if you're watching this and I know that you do sometimes watch my things, I have joined your club. I have bought some things and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm quite proud of myself. So I'll start by showing you the first thing I purchased. This gorgeous yarn from Mothy and the Squid. It's a DK. And you can see it's these gorgeous khaki greens, limey greens, and then all these beautiful fuchsia and neon pink speckles. And this is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon um, DK. But it's really, really soft. It feels super, super soft and squishy, and I love it. And this is destined to be a hat. So, ta-da, done. <laughs> no, it's destined to be a hat. Um, on the stand directly opposite Mothy and the Squid, which was black elephant yarns, they had a really nice hat on a mannequin. It was really simple, just a ribbed hat, really liked it, big pom-pom on the top, and I asked what the pattern was, and it is the standing rock hat. And that is by Lavagna Patricella. I'll pop the details um, down below in the description. It is just a rib hat. I've just printed it out in black and white so you can see it. Um, but yeah, just a standard rib hat with a big pom-pom on, knit in the round, nice and easy. Um, but I figured that would be a really good bit of knitting just for on-the-go knitting. And I'm going to cast this on probably some point in the next couple of days. The next thing that I acquired at Yarndale was a pattern. Now, in previous videos, if you've watched them, I had a really nice sheep years whirl in peachy, orangey colors, gray and black. I was planning on making a dress with it. Um, it never happened, it's not likely to happen. Um, and when I was on the sheep years stand, they were giving away pattern books, really nice printed pattern books. They've got the little metal rings on them so you can put them into a ring binder um, and I picked up the Stormy Day Shawl um, by Kirsten Ballering and it looks really nice it's got all those lovely popcorn um, stitches all the way through it so you can see there all these lovely popcorn stitches and my one's obviously going to go from black to grey and into the peachy colours at the bottom so I've been looking for a new crochet project to do for ages and um, so again I'm going to take this one with me this week and I'm going to get started on that too. It's nice because it just uses one cake and those whirls as beautiful as they are are retailing I think about 26 or 27 pounds in some places. Um, they did have loads of special offers on at the show though, they were 20 pounds each um, which was really good but I was a good girl and I didn't pick up another one. So the Stormy Day Shawl is going to get made with my sheep as well. Next thing I bought also, un yarn related, um, 
but it had to be done. I got Sue Stratford Designs Knitting and Gin Tote, and I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, I thought these were just going to be normal totes when I saw them on Instagram, but they're not. They're the really nice strong canvas um, bags with a gusset, so they're really nice and strong. So all of my knitting projects are going to go in here for my week away. When we got to the stand, um, there was actually only six bags left and both myself and Saz bought one. So that was probably about lunchtime on the Sunday. Um, so she would have very swiftly sold out, which was great news for Sue. I'm pretty sure, I mean, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure she's gonna get more in stock. So if you go into Nottingham Yarn Expo or any of the other yarn expos in the future, I'm sure you'll be able to pick yourself up one. Now my next purchase was a real, real splurge. Um, I came across a stall that I'd never come across before, a yarn company that I'd not heard of called Beehive Yarns. Um, and it's really lovely. The lady who runs Beehive Yarns has a big beehive and she wears a big beehive um, when she's on the stand. Um, I didn't get her name, so I'm ever so sorry. If you're watching this, um, do comment below, <laughs> let me know. But Beehive Yarns um, produces some absolutely beautiful yarns. And there was a shawl on the stand, which I now know was a shawl called Among the Shadows, and it's by Kalina, I think it's probably Selina, but it's with a K, Kinnersley Designs. And again, it's available on Ravelry. Um, it's about $6, I think. Um, and I purchased it this morning. It's a very simple shawl, and actually this picture is not gonna show it off to, to the best at all. Um, but, there you go, you can see it's got like a very big rib along the very bottom edge. And throughout the whole shawl, there's lots of garter, um, but it's like garter ridges, so there's lots of texture in there. And so this picture's pretty pants, it doesn't really show it off very well at all, but um, Beehive had a beautiful shawl on their stand in a lovely golden mustard colour, um, but the yarn was so soft and it had the most amazing drape to it and I picked it up and I put it on and I was just like oh this is so nice and that's one of the things I absolutely love about going to yarn shows is that you get to see um, the products that people have made with their yarn and you can see how it works up you can see how it drapes you can see what the designs look like on you um, as a really good example there was a shawl that I absolutely loved that looked like a lovely big cobweb on one of the stands but when I tried it on I just couldn't wear it it didn't look right on me it wasn't my cup of tea or my style so if I'd have just seen that online I'd have probably ordered the pattern ordered the yarn cracked on made it and then been disappointed but to actually be able to see the products and to see the shawls and everything else in the flesh try them on and see that you're going to like them and then buy the yarn for it was brilliant. So I love this shawl. It was so super soft and I realised it was because the yarn that was used to make it was 50% merino, 50% silk. So that word alone is going to tell you that this yarn wasn't the cheapest. It was £18 a skein. Um, you need a skein and a half to make the shawl. So I will be left with half a skein, but I'll probably put that into a hat or something or make a beautiful pom-pom even. I could make a beautiful pom-pom to go on the top of this, although it doesn't really go. But it will find a use, I am sure. So I purchased two skeins of this. It's called um, the Ronnie um, Mix which is, again, 50 grams silk and 50 grams merino. Again, it's DK. I love DK. I'm a big fan of DK yarn, and I was really pleasantly surprised to see there was actually quite a lot of DK yarn at Yarndale. I tend to find a lot of the dyers stick to sock weight or fingering weight because that's what people tend to buy, and they don't have much DK, but I have managed to pick up a fair bit, so I was quite pleased. It's much faster to knit with, and I enjoy it, and I make things a lot quicker, and I don't get bored when I'm using DK. But when I use sock weight, I just switch off and I get really bored and find it really fiddly. So this will be a super quick knit. As I say, it's predominantly garter. There's a little bit of pearl in there, not a lot. Um, it's a simple enough pattern to follow. The pattern itself, um, well, it's a bit paperful pattern, so I won't tell you loads. But the pattern itself, you know, it fits on one page. So it's not exactly complicated. Um, and it is advertised as a beginner's pattern. So I'm going to be good. I'm not going to cast this one on just yet. Um, but it is something that I will try and get done, I think, before Christmas. Because it's a really lovely winter berry kind of colour. The colourway is actually called Blackberry Lips. Um, so I think it will be a really nice one. It will go really nicely with my coat as well um, for this wintery time of year that's coming up so it will be cast on fairly soon 
Now the last two that I have plans for, um, this one was in the bargain bin for a 10 whole pounds. So I got this from the lovely Lisa for the love of yarn. It is sock weight, um, but you can see luminous yellow, luminous pink, this lovely peachy with luminous coming through um, and blues as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Now I picked this up because I'm going to attempt the large brioche band at the bottom of my penguono um, and I wanted to know that I had um, a large-ish quantity of yarn to be able to do that with. Um, I suspect I'll probably only need half of this in which case there's half that can go into a pair of socks at some point if I do contrast heel tufts, heel tufts? Heel cuffs and toes with another yarn. So. This is going to get caked up and taken away with me because I have nearly finished the second sleeve on my penguono, which means I'm going to be starting that brioche band really soon. I'm so scared. Um, I have every intention of placing a big fat lifeline in so that if I absolutely screw it up, then it will become garter knitted. Um, but this is going to be the big hem band on my penguono. The next one that has a plan, this is from Siobhan's Crafts. I've got a couple of things from her, but I'll show you the other bits in a minute. Um, again, it's another DK and it's beautiful. It's so vibrant. I love these layery fluorescent colors. Um, they're probably one of my favorite colorways, but it's a DK one. Now, I have been saving up really beautiful, really unusual, bright DKs. I've got a couple of truly hooked ones um, and I've got some leftovers from Little Boo from a cardigan that I did my daughter um, and I've been stashing them for about the last year. I have every intention of making Stephen West's fringed shawl um, with those and again it will be totally eclectic, totally zany, nothing will match, it will just be crazy in your face Stephen Westness and that's what I love about his patterns is that nothing needs to match, they're just nuts and I love them and again DK shawl, all garter with a few um, yarn overs and eyelet rows and loads of fringing and tassels. I cannot wait to get started on that. And I should say that this was a bargain. As we left um, Siobhan's stool, I told her that she needs to put her prices up um, because they were so cheap. This skein of yarn cost me 12 pounds. Now I have never bought a hand dyed skein of yarn before from an indie dyer for 12 pounds. Um, unless it's been in the sale bucket or something like that. Um, but this was kind of the going rate for her DKs and she had some absolutely beautiful yarns on her stand, as you'll see in my Yarndale video when I do it. Or you may have already seen it. So we'll move on to things that I don't know what I'm gonna do with and I'll, while I'm talking about Siobhan's craft, I'll start with that. This actually, got from me probably one of the best reactions that Saz has ever seen to someone finding something that they've loved. It wasn't caught on camera at all, um, but Saz said to me, Claire, come and look at this, you'll love it, showed it to me, and I actually went, <gasps> as I took hold of it. <laughs> she was killing herself laughing, she said how funny it was, but when I show you, oh, if you're a, an 80s, 90s girl like me, you're going to love it. Look at this mini set. I'm just gonna do this really slowly and it will suddenly become apparent. Ah, it's the Care Bears. But how clever, look at their bellies. She's done white and speckles for their bellies. And then she's got the colour on the tips and the colour on the tips. It's this lovely high twist and you can see it's got Stellina in there so it's sparkly. Be still my beating heart. When I showed this to Isabel this morning, she had pretty much the same face and the same excitement as me. So Mr Mac turns around to her and says, you do realise that's what happens to Care Bears when they die, don't you? They're skinned and turned into yarn. Stuff of nightmares. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I have no idea. If anybody has any suggestions for an easy, quick pattern um, that is designed with a mini set and possibly a contrast, um, please let me know. I have got an undercover otter 
grey. I've also got, and in fact, I think it would probably work better, I've got some of Sazzy's, yes, it will. I've got Sazzy's Tin Man colourway, but it was Tin Man gone wrong, so it was from the early days when she was first starting to dye, and it's got a bit of a lilac twinge to it, so that would go really nicely with this one. So, yes, yeah, some Tin Man as our main colour, and then these minis running through it. I'm thinking there's probably a Stephen West shawl even that's got like ridges that you could use minis in. So if anyone's got any suggestions um, for that, can you let me know? It can be knitted or crocheted, I don't mind. Um, but I really want to show off these lovely Care Bear yarns. Oh, I've got the hiccups. The next one is another DK. Um, I think this will probably end up being one of those hats as well, in fairness. You can never have too many hats. Um, it's beautiful. Again, it's another dyer I'd not heard of, Cookston Crafts. Um, you can see. So it's a gorgeous grey. It doesn't look very grey here. It looks a bit washed out. But it's a gorgeous grey with Stellina. I love a bit of Stellina. And speckles of bright pink and blue. It really doesn't show off particularly well in this light. Oh, there we go, that's better. Now you've got some mustards in there, just a little bit, and some beautiful rich purples. And the grey, if I can try and get it to, there you go, that's better. You can see the grey more from a distance. It's like a dark grey, smoky grey, with all these lovely colours running through it. And I think that's just going to be a hat. There's nothing more to it. When you get a skein of DK, that's that's the easiest thing to do, isn't it? But I loved it. It was really pretty. just cool to me. Um, that, and they'd made their own tablet that was like fudge. It was just beautiful. So I actually had two pieces. Next one was from the lovely Debbie at Down Cheapy Lane. Again, no idea what I'm going to do with this. It's actually a very, very, very fine sock weight. Um, so I suspect it will probably go into a shawl of some sort. I don't think I'll knit socks with it. I might do. I still keep saying I'm going to do the Mercury socks. And the last yarn that I bought from Debbie at Nottingham was going to be Mercury socks and then turned into a shawl. So... I don't know. It will just get added to the stash. But it was so pretty. It's called Grandma's Garden. And I can see why she's called it that. You've got all these beautiful fuchsia colours in. I mean, I know my grandma had a my nan and my mum had loads of trailing fuchsias in their garden. You've got all these beautiful appley greens. Um, lovely tealy colours. You can see on the back here, look, there's lots of that fuchsia in there. And then down the bottom, it just becomes a lot more green, appley green, really fresh colours. So, yeah, I can see why she called it um, Granny's Garden. I would have actually called it Sheepy Lane, because check out her logo. Check out the colours of the yarn. But there we go. But I can see why it's called Grandma's Garden. No idea what I'll do with it. One for the stash. There's two more like that. I never do this. This one's truly hooked. I love Verity Jean, I love Verity's company, I always buy something if I can. It's just delicious. It's this lovely dark charcoal grey, you can see the Stellina in there. It's playing havoc with my camera's autofocus. There's luminous yellow, luminous pink, purple. All my favourite colours. Luminous green. And again, no idea what I'm going to do with it. I could put it into my Penguono. I don't think I will because the grey is too dark and I'm trying to stick to all of the luminous colours. Um, but I have got a skein of Undercover Otter in this kind of colour. Um, so I might do a, a two skein project um, and put it with that at some point. But again, don't know quite what. And this is my last one. Absolutely beautiful. Again, it's another one from Lisa for the love of yarn. Um, and it's just phenomenal just look at those colors there's a little bit of undyed in there which i like but they're just such vibrant speckles there's blue there's purple there's orange there's yellow there's green there's tealy blue there's oh everything it's just absolutely gorgeous and i love these undyed speckly skeins i think they look absolutely superb this one is called unicorn dreams very pretty, no idea what it's gonna be. So yeah, I did go a bit overboard. I'm hoping, in fact I know, it's gonna be so, so busy at Nottingham in November and I'm gonna be so busy selling copious amounts of yarn to all of you lovely customers um, on Saz's behalf that I'm not gonna get a chance to look around and buy anything because honestly, 
I have everything I bought last year at Nottingham untouched. I have half of the projects I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival two years ago untouched. Um, and now I have this lot. And I actually have nowhere at home to put this lot. My box is full. Um, so I need to stop. And the other thing I need to do is get back to my half an hour a day minimum of knitting or crocheting. Because when I do that, I'm on an absolute roll. I mean, I made a jumper in three weeks and I'm halfway through another jumper. Um, and I've got a shawl halfway on the go as well. So I can churn stuff out quite quickly when I put my mind to it but if I get into a, a yarn slump and don't do anything creative then it's amazing how quickly time runs away with you and you get absolutely nothing done so you won't see me again <laughs> until I have got something to show you on the yarny front um I have already got an FO to show you. You will have seen a sneaky peek of it if you've seen photos of me at Yarndale um, because I did wear it. And I have got some whips that I think are going to get massive progress on them during this week. So there should be a podcast coming really soon and I will keep you posted. Best place to follow me for yarny stuff is probably on Instagram. That's where I post my pictures of what I'm up to. Um, but just general crafty chit chat, make sure you join our Facebook group. The link's down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.